Thanks, as always, for listening to Fluff and Crunch. In this episode, I discuss the sudden death of my Castles and Crusades campaign, my reasoning to switch to Traveler, and our really outstanding Session Zero of character creation. If you want to jump right to the content, jump to the two-minute mark. As always, like and subscribe, join the Discord. We'd love to hear your feedback. All right, recording. Good morning, Chris, and welcome back from vacation. Hi, Jeremy. How are you? I'm very well. I'm very well. And you just said that you had a wonderful vacation in primarily where you were in? Mostly Croatia. Croatia. Okay. I did a lot of, lot of scenes from Game of Thrones. <laughs> oh, my golly. I, one of your Facebook pictures, it was just gorgeous. It's like little castles and mountain lakes is what it looked like you experienced. Yeah. An awful lot of time by the sea, lots of swimming, a lot of sun. Um, and yeah, castles and, and lots of old towns. So yeah, it was good. Good. Glad, glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. Now you're back to something back to normal life ish. Uh, no, because I'm still on. I still don't go back to work for another three weeks. So. I mean, normal life, like you know, you you, you wake up in your own house and oh, yeah, you know, yes, compared like to that. that. Yeah, I've got a relatively chill. And Annie's booked into stuff most of this week, so I have a I have a relaxing week to get over my over my uh, holiday. Great, right? You need a break from vacation. Very good. That's that's how we do it. So I don't what need to ask you to? about gaming because you didn't do any in the last couple of weeks. No, I mean, like, yeah, card games and that's about it. I did. I managed to, I managed to fit in a miniatures tournament on Sunday, though. So I literally got, no, that was Saturday. I got back on Friday and then went straight into a Star Wars tournament on, on Saturday. So that wasn't, that was that's cool. interesting. That's cool. But other than that, I was going to ask you about yours, but you're actually, what we're talking about this episode is your gaming. So. Yes. <laughs> Spoilers. So, so yeah, so I think it's, and the reason why I thought it would, it, it's worthwhile for us to talk about this, I mean, I'd like feedback from you, but also for, for listeners, especially GMs, is that, that these things, that which we're going to talk about here, these things happen. Um, <clears throat> now, so we've been, I've been running Castles and Crusades using the Pathfinder Kingmaker Adventure Path since um, like September. We started in, I think we started laying the groundwork for it in August. We took most of December off. We took most of uh, June off. But other than that, that, that's what we've been playing. And weekly. You know, every once in a while there's a missed week. But, um, you know, we played into the second book of the six. And, um, you know, if you, if you, I'll put links excuse me, to the, uh, some of the other episodes that are about this, about the, how I translated into Castles and Crusades and whatnot, I, I will fully admit that uh, there, were, there were some things about the system, some friction points with some of my players that never went away, um, that never went away in terms of expectations that a D20-based, level-based D and D looking kind of system should behave more like D and D, or should yield the kinds of results that Five E yields. I was going to say they what they wanted to play Five E, but it's not Five E. Correct. Um, although it, 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 I mean, yeah, like I said, friction points were were there. Now, what I saw from my side of the screen is that as I got more proficient with and used to the system, and we added some levels. Um, I found some things that I really like about this system, and I found some things that I'm not too fond of with the system. And um, without going into, you know, great gory detail about that, the, the simplicity of the system is great, but that's also a piece of its, um, that's also a piece of its, its uh, I don't know, that's, that I consider that actually a drawback. In some places, especially monster stats, and monster stats are really easy to use, but what happened over time is that combat became the kind of combat that bores me to death, which is just, you're just tracking damage. You know, there's really not a whole lot else to it but damage. Um, and I also found, too, that there are a lot of really low-level weak monsters, but there are, and there are some very powerful higher-level things, but there, there isn't a whole lot that I found that fit in the, like stat blocks rather that fit the kingmaker campaign well in those like middle levels so long story short um we had week before last <clears throat> you know five players and one of the characters was unexpectedly killed by trolls um 
beheaded and I, I described a, a fountain of blood spraying up out of the head and you know out of the neck and slumps over and he's dead. And he was fine with it. My, that one player of mine, he, you know, I've played with him on and off for years. And he was terrific about it. Um, you know, it happens, no big deal. And so, at the, and that happened like right at the end of the session. And so uh, I said, all right, what do we want to do? You know, Steve, do you want to make a new character? Do you want to, um, you know, have someone just like, you know, wander in and become part of the team or maybe pick up an NPC or what do you want to do? And I know that he's been really, really busy away from the table. Um, he's in education as well. And, uh, and so he's been super busy of late. And so I, he just said, listen, I think I'm going to take a break for a while just because I, I've just got too much going on anyway for a weekly game. I was like, okay, that's a bummer, but I understand. And so then I just used that as an opportunity to say, listen, you know, I, I'm, I have to say that there are lots of things I like about this game and this story. But um, I am so burned out on fantasy, and mm -hmm. I am. I am totally burned out on fantasy. I don't want elves. I don't want dwarves. I don't want magic. I don't want milords and miladies. Like, I just hit the point where I look myself in the GM mirror, and I'm like, I just, I've been playing fantasy almost nonstop for two years, and I'm just tired of it. And everyone was super fine with that. They're like, that's cool. So I threw out some ideas, and we decided to play the, the grand old, uh, the grand old daddy of, of science fiction games, Traveler, that no one at the table had played. And I had been, re I often do this when, when I'm playing one thing and we're well into it. I'm running one thing and we're well, well into it. I, I actually, I keep my energy level up by not binging only on what I'm running. I'll read something else that's totally different. I'll dream about the next campaign years down. And usually that doesn't cause any problems. Like it doesn't make mm -hmm. me want to run off after the new shiny thing. It gives me an outlet. Um, but in this case, it had actually given me the opportunity to have some groundwork to be, to be ready. But yeah, I'm just so... I'm so done with fantasy for a while. I don't know if you've ever hit a point with a genre like that. Uh, I mean, no, I more have the problem that you just said that you don't, that if I'm playing one thing and I start looking at something else, I want to, I want to switch to something. Yes, I know that. Or, so I don't or, tend heaven, to... or, or worse, you go see a movie. Yeah, so I don't tend to play anything. I mean, the longest we managed is literally that, you know, like that thing, the whole of last year where we, the only thing we played for most of 2023 was, was 5e. Yeah. And that, that's it. So we didn't, we didn't play anything else, but because we were mixing it, mixing out characters and stuff and we had kind of different things going on. Um, I, it was fine. I mean, I could have, I mean, we didn't actually, we only made it just the other side of the summer, but I just knew that we, it was all going to fall apart in the summer because we have this big break and right. We can never seem to meet up over the summer to finish things. So, uh, so actually, it was only about six, well, seven months that we we did, and then after that, we didn't. I don't think we play any role playing games for most of the latter half of last year. Yeah, well, um, I know it's it's actually been a, a long while since you've had something consistent uh, in this. But um, what I what I had decided to do, and you remember, we talked a couple of months ago, and I'll put a link to this episode, um, that episode rather. We had talked about Traveler. I did an overview because you didn't really know anything about it other than the the story of you can die during character creation, which <laughs> by Mongoose Second Edition rules you cannot. However, they do Ooh. offer that they do offer that as the Iron Man option, which <laughs> all it is is yeah, you can die during character creation. Yippee oh, that's cool. Um Actually, the, the way character creation works now is that if you fail your survival role, each term of service, and, and if you're not familiar with Traveler, Traveler offers this terrific life path. It's really, I think, like the first life path system that was created is that you start at age 18 and you do some number. Some of it is choice. Some of it is die roll outcome that determines it. But you do some number of four-year terms in things like the army, the marines, a merchant, an agent, uh, uh, whatever. There's all different kinds of general career fields. And you pick up each four years, you pick up certain skills and you have an opportunity to get promotions and you have an opportunity to have different life events happen and things like that. And one of the roles you have to make is a survival role. And it used to be in classic traveler, if you fail the survival role, you just die. And you're supposed to just start a character all over again. It's like tough. 
Now, if you fail a survival roll, you suffer a mishap, you roll on a different table and it tells what happens to you. And then you are out of that career. So you did that four years and then you're, you're out. So we actually had a few people. We, we decided, like I said, we're going to play Traveler Mongoose second edition 2022 update. Uh, rules update. So we're playing the latest and most uh, current version of the Mongoose second edition rules. And with four players, we, we created characters this last week. And the wonderful thing about Traveler as a session zero, and it actually recommends this, it recommends that you do not make characters in isolation. It rec they actually recommend that, that everybody at the table make characters together because the assumption is that you're a team and that you know each other. And so by working around the table to create characters jointly, you, you as a player get to know all the steps in that character's backstory. So there, there isn't, and it even says this in the book, there isn't the, you meet in a starport, uh -huh. you know, you meet in a starport tavern moment, and then you as players are explaining to each other what your characters are all about. Um, so we did that, and we had a really interesting session that took virtually our entire time together. Um, and have some some characters that have, I think, really interesting backstories because of what the players working with each other and me suggesting, because they don't know anything about the Traveler universe, and I do, suggesting how experiences for one overlapped with or connected with experiences for another. Like I said, you, you, you can't have your characters die anymore, but there's some yeah. stuff you post to me sounds like you have actually generated really interesting backstories for some yeah. of these characters. So what happens is, you know, you, 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 the default is you start at age 18 and you as a player decide like, oh, I think I want to do this. Like I want to, like I had one or two players decide that they wanted to send their characters to the Marine Academy, like, you know, like Space Marines kind of thing. And another decided that she wanted to send her character to university. Another said, I just want to go directly into the scout service. And so what you have to do is you have to roll to get into each of those. And if you don't get in, you then have to just sign up for the draft. And then you do, you, you know, it's just like life kind of sucks you in some direction or another. But they all got into their, their chosen initial direction. And um, so the two characters that made Marines... They, they finish after four years, and then they, they went into their first term of service as Marine officers, and one rolled a promote. Both of them rolled promotions, so they go both got promoted during their first four years. And one of them rolled, I forgot what his event was, but it was some kind of interesting, like, you know, you did something cool in battle or, or whatever, you know, something that you would expect. The other one rolled a, um, he rolled poorly, and there was, he was involved in some kind of scandal. And he was drummed out of the core. So he, he put four years into the academy and spent <laughs> four years as a Marine officer and then was booted. And so what, what we decided is that some he got maybe he got involved with like a general's daughter or something like that. And uh, and the guy torpedoed his efficiency report so he couldn't get promoted. So he just separated. <laughs> All right. So there's a little bit of story there, whereas his buddy is like, you know, Mr. Like on the on the rise, you know. The, the, the character who went to university decided that she wanted to be an agent, which is just the blanket term for like law enforcement or espionage. And each of these career fields has three sub categories in it. So agent has law enforcement, corporate or intelligence. So intelligence would be like you're 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 working for like you know, the, uh, you know, government intelligence agency, whereas corporate is like you're doing corporate espionage and counter -es in intelligence. That's what she decided she was going to do after college. So she got some like administrative and legal training in college, and then she goes off and becomes an agent. She does that for two terms. And then she rolled a, uh, she rolled, she ended up rolling a mishap and had an option where uh, she could either, I forgot what the one option was, but the other option was go to prison, which is actually a term of service. It's actually a quote unquote career. And this was, she was accused of a crime. Whether she committed the crime or not is another issue. It doesn't say. These just provide you with outcomes and, and, and vague reasons why. And so she said, okay, I'm going to go to prison. I was like, okay. <laughs> so she did her fourth term as a prisoner. And, um, 
and decided that when she was a prisoner, because you can choose to either be, uh, I forget what it was. The first one is basically you're just trying to keep your head down. The second one is you become like a thug in mm-hmm. jail. And then the, the third one is you're a, you're a fixer. You're like getting people stuff. So that's what she decided her character was. And then her character gets out after four years. And she's like, okay, I'm done. And when you're done, there's a point at which you can just decide, I'm done with character creation. And then you, uh, your character starts their quote-unquote adventuring uh, life. The third or the fourth character, he decided he was going to go into the scout service, you know, go explore, look, look for new planets, stuff like that. And he did three terms. And in his thir- third term, he rolled a mishap. And, uh, and it said that he was, he was found like unconscious and floating in a ship somewhere and, and no one knew why. And so once you have a mishap, you're done with that service. So he gets out and I just decided, okay, like, you know, you, you were just put on like extended medical leave because they're like, uh, you got to have a twitch and we're not going to trust you in a cockpit right now. So then he did four years as a, on a merchant ship, which totally makes sense. Like he had been space crew for, you know, 12 years and then he can't do that anymore. So he's like, well, I'm just going to sign on somewhere where I can do something else that's related to this. And then after his fourth term, he stopped. The former Marine officer went and did a ter- two terms as an agent. Okay, so he gets out of the Marines under like kind of, you know, murky circumstances. But, but some people know it really wasn't his fault, maybe per se. You know, maybe someone just had, a, had it out for him. So he gets hired on to do some like contract intel work. But then he rolls a mishap in his second term of that, which has him, um, he's offered a deal by a criminal. And so as we decide, okay, he, he, he decides to accept it, but then he has to be drummed. He, he loses, he drops out of that career as well. And so his, uh, we decided that his character was, you know, looked the other way while some kind of graft or uh, like kickback money scheme took place. And so what we have now is we have four characters who are all the same age. They all did four terms worth of checkered service, except for the Marine officer who stayed in. He was like, Mr., you know, Mr. Ramrod back, you know, perfect spit and polish after 16 years. Um, and, uh, and we came up with some really good connections. Like the two Marines knew each other in the academy. And even though the one guy left under cloudy circumstances, the guy who stayed in knows that he kind of got screwed. Um, the two, a- the, the, the agents, rather the, the former Marine who, who became an agent and then the one who was an agent and went to jail would have met one another, could have met one another while doing like intel work. And any of them, any of the, the ones who, not the Marine officer, but the other two could have ended up, you know, on a merchant ship, made contact with this merchant guy who had been a scout. So it was like, there were, there were lots of natural points. And this is the wonderful thing about Traveler's character generation system and running it as a session zero is that you, you end up creating or finding rather not creating, you just find through these roles, these very organic connections between the characters and their backgrounds. So we have this group that makes sense together, but they have these weird background facets that I've already been able to in the last, you know, couple of days, think of, of ways to leverage those for future stories rather than like your typical, as I call it, the tortured 5e backstory. Um, Person makes character in isolation. Person writes overwrought backstory and then hands it to the GM and expects the GM to read the darn thing and make sense of it. (laughs) Whereas I managed the character creation process, which meant I was able to listen and take notes and provide suggestions in ways that made sense for the universe but also kind of drove the characters closer um, together. So there are lots of unanswered questions, you know, fully, but, um, but it, it worked out. It worked out really well. And I think that's one of the strengths. So if you have not played Traveler before and you just heard about this weird character creation system, uh, it, it creates opportunities. And I think that it creates opportunities that, like, you wouldn't have in, you know, using 5e as my regular punching bag, you wouldn't have it in 5e because 5e does not have, even though it has steps, it doesn't have this life path style thing that everybody moves through. Like picking a background or a heritage or a superhero cape, whatever the hell they call it now, it's not the same. This provides those opportunities as your character grows to the point that you 
unleash them on the world as a as an adventurer what kind of things are your group going to be doing then well um the last step in character creation and this is an innovation at least from my memory is an innovation of mongoose second edition traveler um you at the end of character creation after everybody's done and after everyone's mustered out and rolled their benefits and you know rolled like how much cash did i save how much equipment did i accrue during my years as a whatever the group of players choose with the gm what general type of campaign focus you're going to have are you going to be mercenaries? Are you going to be primarily on a ship? Are you going to be explorers? Are you going to be diplomats? Are you going to be criminals? Are you going to do espionage? There's like 10, eight or 10 different kind of umbrella vibes, if you want to call it, tones, focuses for a campaign. And each of those comes with eight skills, eight different skills. And the idea is that you then go around the table and everybody chooses a skill until you use all of those up to fill in any gaps. So the, the most um, generic skill package is called the traveler package, which is just, you know, you're, you're a spaceborne murder hobo. Uh, and so there's like, it offers deception, gun combat, pilot, um, you know, just different, like a, a, a selection of ground focus type skills and, and, and starship focused skills. And what was handy is that I have four players, there are eight skills. And so everybody got to pick two and they just, they, they fleshed out their characters, thus filling in gaps so that the group as a whole has all the different sorts of skills that they need to engage in those general kinds of adventures. Like up to that point, only one character could pilot a ship. That was the scout. Yeah. And so since pilot one was one of the skills, one of the other characters took that because there'd be no point. And, and those skill packages are not meant to enhance. So when you take like pilot one and if you already had pilot, it doesn't actually add to it. It's meant to be first level only. So it's meant to fill in gaps, not enhance. So everybody got two skills that they had not had at level one so that there's, there is this broad um, capacity in the group to engage in those general types of ad adventures. I thought that was, that's a, that's a really neat, it's a neat way to tie a group together. Yeah. It's also a neat way to ensure that the sorts of adventures that you as a GM intend to present, they can actually do without some kind of, you know, skill gymnastics to twist, to fit. All right. So that's, you've got an idea of how you've put the crew together, but I wonder what's that going to lead you to in terms of well, adventures that they're going to be doing. Well, there's this great adventure that I've had. I've run once actually. And then a friend of mine has run once and, and he innovated on, and I stole back his innovations from him that I'm using. It's a, it's a published adventure from Mongoose called High and Dry, which is a, <clears throat> it's based around the idea of um, a, somebody from the scout service contacts the players the characters rather which makes perfect sense in this case because one of the characters is a former scout and says listen there's this scout ship and in traveler by the way it is it's it's perfectly normal for former scouts to be able to have access to a small scout ship that the service lends to them that um that they don't have to pay for but they have to take care of and the, the, it's like a ship that's on loan to them. And that means the ship's maintenance gets kept up by the character, but then the ship can be called back into service if the scout service needs it. So it's this mutually beneficial arrangement. And also from a meta standpoint, it, um, it's an easy way to provide a group with a ship so that they can travel. You know, there's also, there are ways to get ships from, by other characters as well, but it was just handy that one of the characters had been a scout. And so a, uh, a contact of his reaches out to him and says, listen, there's this scout ship of ours that was on, um, you know, that was on this kind of uh, uh, duty and it's been abandoned on this planet a few parsecs away. Um, the crew that had been loaned the ship were dirtbags. They didn't take care of it. Uh, they falsified their maintenance logs and lied about a bunch of stuff. So they're in jail um, and the ship is just sitting on this planet. If you can go get it, and bring it back here, we'll overhaul it, and then it's yours. You can use it, and it'll just be on extended loan duty. So 
that's the that's the um, the hook for this adventure. Uh, but the truth of the matter, and I'm going to tell my players not to listen to this. And if you're a player who might play high and dry, it's a great adventure. <laughs> Don't listen. Uh, GMs, here are your spoilers. The yeah, the the thing is sitting on this planet, but it's sitting on a small island in the uh, uh, in a volcano. And it had been it had been used to do some planetary survey work on behalf of this little planet's little government. Um, the former crew were absolute scumbags, and everybody hated them. And everywhere they went, they left a bad reputation behind them. So when these people show up and they're like, "Yeah, we're looking for the such and such," they have to. We're looking for this ship. They have to deal with all the headaches that this crew left them because of like you know rep reputation by proxy. Um, and then, uh, and then also my buddy had added an extra wrinkle that the scout service uh, contact owed a, a favor to a friend who was a lawyer who had a client who, who uh, would be witness who needed to be put in, a, you know, not necessarily witness protection, but needed to be kept on the down low for a while before she could testify in some kind of organized crime trial. So they have now been, uh, they've had a, a, a stripper named Anastasia dumped in their lap that they have yeah. to haul several parsecs away, keep out of trouble, and then fix this ship and then get it back um, to, uh, to the, the planet where they were from to then earn the ability to have this as their own ship. So there's lots of things happening. And again, the ship is parked in a volcano. Um, <laughs> nothing bad could come of that, of course, um, but it will. <laughs> so one of the, the, one of the tenets of Traveler is that it's, and they say this right in the book, your characters are not superheroes. They are generally ordinary people who are in extraordinary circumstances. Like crap's going to happen to them and they have to figure out how to deal with the crap that's going to happen to them. So having a bargain to go get a ship, you're like, yeah, we'll just get transport to this. You know, it's going to take us a couple of weeks to get there and we'll just, we, we have the repair parts for the ship in these boxes you gave us. We're just going to fix the ship and fly it back. Easy peasy. It's never going to be that easy. So the nice thing about this as an adventure is that it enables me to introduce a new group of players to some of the tropes of the Traveler universe. The idea of like how long it takes to jump and the economics of it and things like that. Um, it enables them to get their hands on a ship so that they can start traveling because you're not a traveler unless you travel and get involved in adventures and stuff. And then also the idea that nothing is, never, nothing is ever completely as it seems. There's always going to be something else maybe that gets thrown in your face that you have to deal with. Well, that sounds like you've got a pretty good idea of what you're going to be doing with them. And your characters have seem reasonably well sorted and linked together. So yeah, yeah, that's like a good starting point. Yeah. And then uh, on top of that, we are making great use already of the traveler map travelermap.com and i'll put a link to that in uh in the notes as well um which is a terrific it is an in-game resource but it's also a, a gm and player resource and and you can treat it the same way um and like i said the link is in there but you can look at thousands upon thousands of worlds and get their data and get like the jump routes and it's you know it allows you to really kind of blur the lines of real versus made up um, and players can use it as their characters would use it because the idea behind the traveler map is that that represents Imperial Scout Service survey data that's updated, you know, every several decades as information is collated and put out about like, that's the population of this world and that's what their government is like and that's their tech level and this is the type of starport that this planet has versus that planet and here's a planet that the empire has uh, interdicted no one's allowed to go there and you don't know why and things like that but someone hires you to go there anyway things like that so um yeah 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 so if you are familiar with anything in the traveler verse they are their adventures will take place in the spinward marches sector uh, very far out near Zodani and um, Sword World space, which means there are other governments potentially involved. And um, and I have my eyes on Mongoose's uh, Fifth Frontier War book, which just came out. So I, I might have them adventuring for a while and then dump a war on them. I'm definitely <laughs> going to tell my players to not listen to these episodes for sure. Yeah, it's probably a good idea. I've got nothing else, so kind of. 
you're supposed to say Zowie. I want to play Traveler. You know what? Actually, I no. you should you would be. I don't know. I think you might dig Traveler. Um, you might not dig it from the standpoint of like the characters aren't like super, like they don't have super abilities, things like that. They're not like super heroic in that respect. But um, but the degree of detail in the world is not it's not like forgotten realms where it's just there's too much and you feel like you're buried in it this all just makes sense they've done a very good job over the years of making the the universe make sense and so then you just have to choose like what area you want to adventure in and what um what themes and storylines that are present in the universe, which ones are most interesting to you. And Traveler's an interesting property in that um, Mark Miller is the guy who created it back in 1977. Um, Game, Game Designers Workshop was the original company that published it, and now it's, I think it's, it's owned by a, the name Mark Miller's company. It's like Far Future Enterprises, but they license it out to Mongoose, which is a British company, so there's lots of armor and honor and things like that. These odd like use in these words here. I don't I don't know why those, but but it's all there. And Mongoose has been a terrific steward of the property. The 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 um the book quality is very high. Physical and layout and art and, and consistency of design and format is is very good. Um, they have done a very good job of explaining the rules and streamlining them and updating them enough so that it feels like there are some elements of the rules that are contemporary, but it's still at its core the same two die six based um, mechanic. Uh, and there's a lot of, there's a ton of fluff and content. And so, I don't know, I think you might dig it. Yeah, I've looked into it a load of times, but it's it's quite, you know, it's another thing that, another yeah. system to try and learn yeah and then try to convince your friends to uh to play it oh they play anything so they're not really oh. bothered but um yeah because i like the whole you know space and exploring stuff that's essentially what we're doing now in the game we're playing but uh yeah having well, to learn another system and background as a pain you know one of the neat things though about it and this about the technology side of it is that it is accepted that there are varying tech levels and like imperial like the 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 average imperial is of a certain level and then there are some places where the technology is better the tech level is higher and then there are plenty of places where the tech level is lower and so you could easily with travelers rules just by excluding things above a certain tech level you could play something like the expanse no problem like you would not have to do anything with the rules it would just be like hey anything above tech level eight or tech you're you're we're not going to have problem solved Everything else works the same. Um, so that's handy. You could also have a science fiction game where you have that mix of, of tech levels, you know, where in some places it's, you know, it's floating, they're not flying castles, they're floating castles uh, or floating palaces. And in other places, it's some frontier world where like, yeah, yeah, there's a starport, but it's a dirt field with a little shed next to it. You know, it's, it's like some kind of airfield in like North India in World War II. <laughs> you know, yes, it's an airfield in that air, airplanes land in that field, but it isn't an airport. So you can have that, that, that variety, which, um, which is pretty cool, actually. We're going to play this um, for a while. I think what we'll do is we'll probably play it for this full adventure, maybe another one, and then take a, maybe a planned break um, and try to drag uh, my buddy Steve back. I'll uh, I'll wave some vampire the masquerade at him and he'll come running. <laughs> but we'll play like one you know one story of that and then plan to go back just just to keep him you know and he's really bit you know how it is you get players good players fun players nice people and they're busy in life but you got to kind of keep them on the hook so that they don't drift away because um, that's way too easy in adult life that if you don't see someone for a couple of months all of a sudden it's five years. All right, cool. I'm gonna find some things, some traveler stuff for you to look at. So that you can, uh, you have an iPad or a tablet, right? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to find some stuff for you to look at so that you can look at it and go, huh, that looks kind of cool. And then maybe you can drag your friends into it. So there we have it. You're back from vacation. I have quickly pivoted away uh, from a campaign that I put a lot of work into and we had fun <laughs> with, but it was just time. No more castles. 
If there are any okay. castles in my Traveler game, uh, they'll be able to come in and mow them down with, uh, with like, missiles and, and lasers. <laughs> Show up on the low-tech world and set themselves up as, like, kings. Well, and then you're back playing fantasy, so maybe not that. Okay, probably not that then. All right, cool. Well, I will gripe at people to like and subscribe on the front end because apparently in, in YouTube best practices, that's what you're supposed to do. But you should like and you should subscribe and click the links and join our Discord, join the conversation and all that good stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, I think you got everything. All right, lovely. Thank you, as always, for listening to Fluff and Crunch. You can join our Discord, you can subscribe to the podcast, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel, all through the links in the show notes. Thanks again, have a great day, we look forward to talking with you.